Jared Poland, Frono's Photo dot com, and this is a real world review of the Canon EOS R8. Now, since Canon handed me the R8 a few months ago, it's pretty much been my go to camera. But Jared, isn't the R3 your go to camera? Well, it sure is. But as you'll see when I get to the specs, they're actually fairly similar where it matters, but a lot more on that a little bit later. I've used the R8 to photograph everything from fast paced action like women's and men's lacrosse during the day and in the snow, to photographing the Philadelphia Phillies, the Philadelphia Union, the Harlem Globetrotters, some really low light bowling action, landscapes at Longwood Gardens, as well as in Paris, and yes, the R8 was the only camera I chose to take with me when I went to Paris. Now, before I get into what I think are the most important specs of the R8, let's step into the time machine and go back four years to the Canon RP. Now, the Canon RP was the second full-frame mirrorless camera Canon released following the EOS R. The RP was the smallest full-frame mirrorless camera around, and it was priced to sell. Now, did it have the greatest specs? No, not really but they also weren't terrible. In fact, with a few firmware updates, the RP gained super solid autofocus and continued to be a viable camera for many years to come. So why am I bringing up the RP in the R8 review? Well, simple, the body. The RP and the R8 share pretty much the same body, but that's where the similarities end. That's because the R8 innards are mostly that of the R6 Mark II. That's right, they share the same 24 megapixel sensor, the same dual pixel AF, the same Digic X processor, the same 40 frames per second shooting for stills, the same video specs, similar bells and whistles, but with different price tags. So what makes them different? What does the R8 lack that the R6 Mark II has? First, the bodies are different. The R6 Mark II has dual SD card slots, a bigger battery, IBIS, and a mechanical shutter. Whereas the R8 has one SD card slot, a smaller, less powerful battery, no IBIS, and is limited to six frames per second with the first curtain electronic shutter, but still gets the same 40 frames per second with the electronic shutter. Now, this is usually where people start yelling at Canon and accuse them of breaking out the cripple hammer. And this is where I tell those people to grow up. Do you really expect R3 features at R8 prices? The point I'm making here is you literally are getting the same quality and shooting power of a $2,500 camera in a $1,500 one with some minor trade-offs. So do these trade-offs hinder your ability to get the job done? Well, we'll find out by the end of this video. Let's start with the body itself. It's small and compact for a powerful full-frame body. Now keep in mind, if your hands are on the bigger side, not, not like mine, your pinky might be hanging off the bottom. But Canon does offer a solution just for solving that in the way of a screw-on grip that gives your hands a little extra room. It actually makes a difference, though it doesn't add any other actual functions to your camera. The dials and buttons are mostly all remappable, meaning you can assign them different functions that work just for your needs. The touchscreen flips out and rotates. The EVF, though small, is still bright, fast, and clean. And the menus are simple and easy to learn as well as navigate. Now, from a body standpoint, Canon did a nice job making a tiny body feel right at home in your hands. Now we move on to the single card slot. Now I prefer having dual card slots so I can shoot redundant, meaning every raw file I take gets saved to both cards. You do not have that ability with the R8 and it might be a deal breaker for some. Now I'm not gonna sit here and try and defend one card slot being similar to only having one roll of film in the camera because times they change. There's always a possibility of a card failing and you losing all of your images. Now with that being said, knock, knock on some wood for me because this is important. This hasn't happened to me. Now my recommendation is this. Make sure you use a professional, reputable brand SD card. We're talking something like ProGrade Digital, SanDisk, Sony, and a few others. Not some no-name, cheaply made, slow SD card. Do not, I repeat, do not cheap out on the SD card. Also, do not order cards from Amazon. 
because there's been times in the past where they've shipped counterfeit cards to people. Stick to the reputable stores like Allen's Camera, B&H, Adorama, Sammy's, and even Best Buy. To me, one of the most important features of a camera is its autofocus. Now I understand autofocus isn't everything to everybody. If you're a landscape photographer, it's not as important to you as it is to someone who shoots sports or wildlife. Now personally, I rely on autofocus 99.9% .9 of the time because one, my eyes are blurry, and two, the autofocus has gotten so good that it allows me to capture things I personally would have missed if I didn't allow it to do its thing. What's great about the R8 is it sports the same processor and focusing engine as the R3, a $6,000 pro body. When using an R8 in terms of autofocus, I don't sit there and say, man, I wish I had the R3's autofocus because the R8's autofocus is on par with the R3's right out of the box. And in my opinion, I feel the R8's autofocus is superior to that of Sony's flagship A1 and head and heels better than Nikon's Z9 and Z8. And that's saying a lot. An entry-level $1,500 camera has better autofocus than flagship cameras. The R8's autofocus is pure insanity. The fact that it keeps up in every fast-paced action scenario that I've thrown at it, from lacrosse to basketball to baseball and soccer, means its autofocus is going to keep up everywhere. I should also add, a lot of the footage was captured with a 12-plus-year-old EF lens that I used the EF to RF adapter on. So how many frames per second can it capture for stills? Well, the answer is six frames per second with the first curtain shutter. Now, mind you, it doesn't actually have a full mechanical shutter and a whopping 40 frames per second with the electronic one, which is 10 frames per second more than that of the R3. Wait, it shoots 40 frames per second and it's $1,500? And the R3 is $6,000 and can only shoot 30? So what's the catch? One, when you shoot at 40 frames per second, you will fill the buffer in one second. Yes, you have a teeny tiny buffer, and if you're not careful with how you shoot, you're gonna be locked up for four to six seconds until the buffer clears and you can shoot again. When I was shooting sports, I made sure to only do quick bursts of about a half a second at a time because I felt this gave the camera and buffer enough time to catch up and not lock up. There's another catch, but before I get into that, remember when I mentioned using quality SD cards earlier? If you're using the wrong SD card in this camera and you fill the buffer, you're gonna be waiting extra long to clear that buffer of all of your images. Now, when you're buying an SD card, make sure you're purchasing one that says V90, not V60 or V30. It's gonna be more expensive, but it's what you need to do to get the most out of your R8. Now back to the catch. Take a look at these photos taken with the R8. You see how the ball and the bat are warped? Now take a look at a similar photo taken with the R3. What's the difference? Well, the R3 has what's called a stacked sensor. Stack sensors have a faster readout speed, meaning fast moving objects will not warp when being captured. But the sensor in the R8 and pretty much every low end camera from Canon, Sony and Nikon are not stacked sensors. These sensors have a much slower sensor readout speed, which leads to the potential for rolling shutter. Now, with that being said, the R8 actually has a faster readout speed than most other cameras, which meant I didn't get a lot of rolling shutter in most of the action sports that I shot. I didn't see issues with lacrosse players running full speed down the field. I didn't see issues when ball players were rounding the bases. I didn't see issues with basketball players floating through the air. So is this a deal breaker? No, I don't think so. You just have to be mindful of what might happen with super fast moving subjects or objects like baseballs. I should also mention with the first curtain shutter, you won't get rolling shutter, but you also only get six frames per second and it's not fully silent when you're in that mode. Let me jump in here real quick because I wanna show you this photo taken with the Canon R8 and edited with 11 of the presets from Fropack 3, starting with Zoolander, followed by Winnebago. Then we've got Walter White, Prestige Worldwide, Mount Airy, Mentos, King Contrast, Eckert, 
Capone, Canadian Tuxedo, and Fifth Element. But check out my favorite preset of all time called Skittles. Boom, one click, and that's how good Skittles looks. So look, if you're looking to speed up your raw workflow, give yourself a great starting point, or you're tired of presets just not working, ours work. We created 15 custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash propack3. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or you could save even more by getting the triple play bundle that includes Fropack 1, 2, and 3, as well as Skittles. Now, let's get back to the video. One of the three caveats of the R8 is its battery. The battery life isn't great, and that's expected because it has a smaller battery. Now, I was able to make it through roughly a full half of a lacrosse match before the battery indicator started blinking red. That was somewhere around 500 to 800 raw images that I captured. If you're shooting video, you're definitely gonna chew through the battery quickly as well. Now my rule of thumb is this, to have at least two extra genuine Canon batteries with you at all times. Now I say genuine as I'm not a fan of third party batteries, spend the extra few bucks. You'll thank me in the long run because sometimes those third party batteries just stop working and you're left in the lurch. Though it chews through batteries quickly, it's not a deal breaker because with the extra batteries, you'll be totally fine. You also can charge your camera via USB-C when you need to get extra juice and you're on the move. Now onto video. The R8 is very capable when it comes to capturing video. You get full width 4K up to 60 frames per second oversampled from 6K with up to two hours of record time, which is basically unlimited record time to me. Now in terms of overheating, Canon says you can get up to 30 minutes of record time in 4K 60 with no limit in 4K up to 30p. Now we never ran into any overheating when we used it in the real world. Just like other Canons, you can achieve 10-bit 422 video when shooting in C-Log 3. And when it comes to slow motion capture, you can get up to 120 frames per second with no audio recording and full HD up to 180 frames per second in super slow motion. Another cool addition is the digital hot shoe. This means audio can be passed directly from the microphone through the digital hot shoe without the need for any wires. Now this comes in handy when you're vlogging as no wires will be getting in your way. You pretty much have the same video features and functions as the $1,000 more R6 Mark II with two exceptions. One, it does not have IBIS, which means your video has the potential to not be as stable if you're walking or vlogging or not using a lens with IS built in. It also helps counteract your movements for stills when you're trying to handhold and shoot at slower shutter speeds. And when paired with RF lenses that have IS or image stabilization, you get even more handhold ability at slower shutter speeds. Would I prefer having IBIS? Of course, it would have helped me in Paris when trying to capture this dog at a cafe at a slower shutter speed, but it's not a reason I wouldn't buy this camera. Look, you'll have to decide which trade-offs you can live with and which ones you can't. And secondly, you have no raw video recording, which isn't a deal breaker at all. All around, the R8 is a great affordable option for quality video. Glass, 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 glass. Give me quality glass on a cheap camera versus crappy glass on an expensive camera. Yes, quality glass can be pricey, but quality glass goes a long way towards getting the best results out of your camera. For my shoots, I used everything from adapted telephoto lenses like the 400 2.8 as well as the 600 f4 to the best of the best with honor sir RF glass like the 28 to 70 f2. 512, 8512, 135, 1.8, 70-200, and anything else that I could get my hands on. Now right now, Canon's affordable quality RF lineup is just a little bit light, but it is getting better. You have the inexpensive RF 50 1.8, the 35 1.8, the 16 2.8, 
24 to 105 F4 and even the 14 to 35 F4. And hopefully there's more to come in the future. Remember, there's always the option to adapt older but still solid quality EF glass. So who's this camera for? Everyone from a person getting their first full frame camera to someone like me, a pro who might want to travel with a smaller body but not sacrifice the features that I love in a more expensive body. The R8 could make for a nice second or backup camera for everyone from a sports shooter to a wedding photographer as well as someone looking to create video content. Now sure, there's caveats, and if they're deal breakers for you, then the Canon R6 Mark II is the answer at $1,000 more. Now if you're trying to figure out the full differences between the R8 and the R6 Mark II, I put them head to head to help you decide which one might be the right one for you, so be sure to look for a link down below in the description to check out that video. To wrap it up, Canon did a masterful job with the $1,500 R8 all the way around. If I'm confident enough to take it as my only camera to Paris or confident enough to use it on a job, then I'm confident it will get the job done in your hands. Now I wanna leave you with one last thing. It's not the gear, it's you. If you don't first understand the basics and fundamentals of photography, no amount of gear is going to help you get that winning shot. And if you'd like to take better pictures, just look for this orange box over on fronosphoto.com, put your name, email address in it, and hit send it, and I'm gonna send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com. See ya.